This video introduces probabilistic lexicalized context-free grammars. I'll describe what lexicalized grammars are, and then I'll show how a popular lexicalized parser, the Collins parser, works. So far we've looked at probabilistic CKY as a method for statistical parsing. Probabilistic CKY is popular and works quite well, especially when incorporating extensions mentioned in the course content like automated splits and merges. However, if we don't want to modify our grammatical rules like is necessary for CKY, another route we can take when performing statistical parsing is employing lexicalized parsers like the Collins or Charniak parsers. Lexicalized parsers are named as such because they allow lexicalized rules. That is, the non-terminals and the rules are parameterized by words and part of speech tags. Specifically, a given non-terminal will specify its lexical head, which, remember, is the sort of leading word in a constituent, and the head's corresponding part of speech tag. So you end up with a parse that looks like what you see here. When our grammar is comprised of lexicalized rules, we have a lexicalized grammar. Intuitively, this grammar looks a lot like we have a ton of different copies of each production rule with variations for different combinations of words and part of speech tags. The production rules in a lexicalized grammar can be divided into two different categories. You have lexical rules, which generate a terminal word, and then internal rules, which generate a non-terminal constituent. In this image, the nodes you see in blue correspond to internal rules, and the nodes you see in red correspond to lexical rules. A key difference between lexical and internal rules is whether they require estimated probabilities. Lexical rules are deterministic. Basically, if we have a rule like what you see here, it's always going to generate the same word. So the probability of that happening would be 1.0. On the other hand, internal rules do require estimated probabilities, and getting these estimated probabilities is easier said than done. We can't just apply normal maximum likelihood estimation because with so many possible rules, the counts from even a large corpus would be really sparse. So instead we have to estimate the probabilities of our internal rules by combining the smaller, more reliable probability estimates associated with their constituents. We can do this using, for example, the Collins parser, which is a popular lexicalized parser. The Collins parser frames all internal production rules using the equation shown here. On the left-hand side, we have a non-terminal parent constituent, and then on the right-hand side, we have the child constituents that it generates. These constituents can be broken down into the head, the non-terminals to the left of the head, and the non-terminals to the right of the head. For the constituents on the right-hand side of the production rule, we need to compute different types of probabilities depending on where they are situated with respect to the head. We'll have one type of probability, P sub L, for generating dependence to the left of the head, one type of probability, P sub H, for generating the head, and one type of probability, P sub R, for generating dependence to the right of the head. The goal of the Collins parser is to use those three probabilities to estimate the overall probability for the production rule. It achieves that goal by surrounding the right-hand side of the rule with stop non-terminals to indicate where to begin and end generating constituents for this rule, computing the individual P sub H, P sub L, and P sub R values for the head and non-terminal in the rule, including the new stop non-terminals, and then multiplying those probabilities together. So if we had a sentence like, grab the purple face masks under the disinfectant, and we were interested in the noun phrase purple face masks under the disinfectant, we could represent it like this. Taking that example and computing our necessary probabilities, we could start with the head. To compute the probability for the head word, we need to find the probability of the head word occurring given the parent constituent on the left-hand side of the production rule. Then, we would move on to computing the probabilities for the non-terminals to the left of the head. So, in this case, we'd find the probability of the stop non-terminal given the left-hand parent constituent and the head non-terminal, along with the probability of the adjective phrase given the left-hand parent constituent and the head non-terminal. Then, we'd finally move on to computing the probabilities for the non-terminals to the right of the head. We'd find the probability of the prepositional phrase given the left-hand parent constituent and the head non-terminal, 
And finally, the probability of the new stop non-terminal given the left-hand parent constituent and the head non-terminal. To estimate the overall probability for our production rule then, we just multiply those probabilities all together. To find the actual values for those individual probabilities, it's relatively easy, especially compared to what it would have been otherwise. These individual probabilities are much less subject to sparsity problems, and we can just compute them using maximum likelihood estimates. And basically, to compute the probability you see here, we would just take the number of noun phrases with the head word of face masks and part of speech tag of in and s that have a prepositional phrase with the head word of under and part of speech tag of in as a child somewhere to the right, and divide that by the number of noun phrases with a head word of face masks and part of speech tag of in and s overall.